Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope your week is off to a great start so far. Happy Monday. I thought I would share with you guys what I picked up from Sephora. I didn't grab too many things, but I like to film hauls. That way I can kind of keep you up to date on which products I spent my money on. I do talk a lot about like new products and whether or not I'm going to buy them. And sometimes I do buy them, sometimes I don't. So I just kind of like to keep you updated and let you know what you can expect to see on my channel over the next few weeks. I kind of cheated and tried out a couple of these products, so I'll share my first impressions with you guys but I will do a full haul update in a few weeks and let you know which products worked for me which ones didn't so I hope you guys enjoy today's video let me know in the comments below if you recently picked up anything and if you think it's worth the money or if you think I should skip over it because that's always helpful too and let's jump into it and I'll show you what I got so this first product's not a new product, but I have been seeing a lot of people mention it in their videos. I think it was out of stock for a long time and then they recently restocked it. So I was a little bit curious about it. I decided to grab it and try it out because I have heard so many good things. It is the Too Faced Peach Perfect Mattifying Loose Setting Powder. I go through these phases where I completely write off like a certain category of makeup. Like for a while I was not into orange lipstick, then I wasn't into pink lipstick. Lately I haven't been into loose setting powders until very recently because I tried one out from Hourglass. They're brand new like veil setting powder and it's amazing. I love it so much. I feel like it makes my skin look very beautiful and I like using it as the last step in my makeup routine just to kind of buff everything together. So it's kind of convinced me to try out some other loose setting powders and maybe not write them all off my list. And because I've been hearing so many good things about this one, I decided to try it out. It's supposed to be a modern comfort matte formula and I figured it would be perfect timing because it is the middle of summer, my skin has been very oily and I just need a good setting powder. So I did try this powder out yesterday for the first time just to test it out and I enjoyed it. I felt like it made my skin look really matte when I first applied it and it kept my skin pretty matte throughout the day. I do really enjoy like the finish of the powder. I think it looked really beautiful. It held my foundation into place really well. So I am looking forward to trying it out more. It is peach scented like the rest of the collection, which I personally really enjoy. I feel like the whole collection smells like those like peach rings and I kind of like it, but if you're not into scented products, you're probably going to want to skip over it. But I will keep testing it out and let you guys know what I think of it. So I've mentioned her channel before, but Ashley Clady is one of my favorite people here on YouTube. She's really great about reviewing new products. So whenever there is a new release, she uploads a review very quickly, which is so helpful. I just enjoy her videos a lot. So she recently reviewed the Natasha Denona Blush and Glow, and this actually wasn't even on my radar. I don't think that I had even thought about it because to be honest with you guys, when I think of Natasha Denona, I usually think eyeshadow palettes. But when Ashley reviewed this product, it caught my eye just because I thought it was a really beautiful option. So this product in particular comes with a mini blush and a mini highlighter, and they're definitely mini they are on the smaller side I feel like the blush is still big enough that I can fit a fluffy blush brush inside I feel like this product is very firmly pressed so it's a little bit different than some of the formulas that I personally reach for I have to kind of layer it up on the face but I like it I feel like they're both very subtle very beautiful I can just throw it in my makeup bag on the go and I don't have to pack two different products and I guess we'll see have you guys tried any Natasha Denona products other than their eyeshadows I I completely didn't even even, like think to look I guess they have other products out there so I would love to hear your thoughts on the brand if you tried anything so I did repurchase one of my favorite bronzers I rarely finish up an entire bronzer I think that I finished up maybe two total I finished up this one from Becca and then also one from physicians formula last year but I have to use a bronzer like every day for almost an entire year to finish it up and the Becca sunlit bronzer in Capri Coast has been my go-to bronzer ever since I first tried it either like last summer or last fall it's just been my favorite it has a really nice like natural sheen to it without being shimmery or glittery so it just looks really gorgeous and if you're looking for something that's not too flat or too matte or too muddy this is a great option I wish that I waited just a little bit longer to purchase it because while I was like waiting for that one to ship I started using the balms take home the bronze and I had been using it a little bit but it wasn't until very recently that it became like an absolute essential for 
me, it looks like you actually get the same exact amount of product as well, a quarter of an ounce. And the Balms bronzer is $17.50 and the Becca bronzer is like $38. They are different formulas. The Becca one's a little bit more lightweight, a little bit more glowy like in a natural way and the balms bronzer is like a completely matte bronzer and they only have three shades so it just kind of depends what you're looking for but if you do want something more on the matte side the balms bronzer is really really good and it's like half the cost I also repurchased my favorite cleanser in the entire world. This is the Ula Henriksen Find Your Balance Oil Control Cleanser. I actually filmed my morning skincare routine, so that will be up either tomorrow or the next day, and then my nighttime skincare routine will be up in like a week or two. But this is what I use every single night when I wash my face. It is my favorite. I've repurchased it. I want to say this is the third or fourth time that I repurchased it at this point. It cleanses your skin without leaving it feeling greasy or oily. Oily, but at the same time it doesn't strip my skin like a lot of products that are meant for oily skin do and it just keeps my skin clear and I love it I love this brand I love this line and I really enjoy this cleanser so if you can get your hands on it if it is not sold out I do recommend grabbing it so I think I mentioned that I was possibly going to pick these products up I honestly didn't think that I would actually do it I thought I just kind of wanted them but I thought I would talk myself out of them they're both from the new Tarte Cosmetics line so the first one is the Amazonian clay 12 hour blush in the shade fairy flesh this packaging is cute I think some people might think it's a little bit juvenile a little childish but I mean I still like pink glittery things I think they're fun my first ever high-end blush purchase was their Amazonian clay 12 hour blush in the shade doll face and it has expired so I've decluttered it from my collection since then I think I also decluttered exposed because again it expired I feel like this blush formula does expire not quickly because I had them for a few years before they ended up expiring, but it does tend to dry out a little bit. I am a big fan of the formula though, and I kind of forgot about it, but I feel like because it is on the more dry side, it's perfect for oily skin because it stays in place all day long, whereas other blush formulas fade throughout the day. So I kind of felt like this color was a mix between doll face and exposed, and because I don't have them in my collection anymore, I thought this might be a good option. I did also get the Love, Trust, and Fairy Dust eyeshadow palette. I feel like Tarte palettes are so hit and miss for me, and I don't remember the last one that I tried. I'm trying to think. I don't think it was the Clay Play palette, or was it? I got that one like at the end of the year. All I know is sometimes they really work for me, sometimes they really don't, so I'm always a little bit hesitant to try new ones, but again, Ashley Clady reviewed this palette, and I really liked her review and what I saw, so I decided to grab it. The outer packaging is interesting. Like, I think it's so beautiful and so fun. I'm a big fan of it, but it has like these stars like pressed into it and you can kind of feel them like they're a little bit raised and I don't know I just love looking at it I think it's really beautiful okay so I did try this palette out yesterday I only wore it once so I'm not ready to share a full review I feel like my first impressions change so often so I don't do a lot of first impression videos on my channel but I am doing a best and worst new eyeshadow palette video very soon I'm currently testing another one on my eyes today that should be up at some point within the next few weeks but I will include a full review on this one. I will tell you guys, I was so impressed by the quality. And of course, things are subject to change, but honestly, I don't know. I feel like the formula is very consistent, at least what I can tell after using it once and swatching everything. The matte shadows are blendable and smooth and pigmented and gorgeous, and the metallic shadows are equally as beautiful. I feel like the metallic shadows do take a little bit to like build them up, but they're also on the lighter side, so I didn't really expect anything too intense or crazy. But there are some really pretty cooler tone mattes in here, and I'm just enjoying it so far. I just feel like it's a fun palette. Palette, especially if you are into like pinks and purples and it just looks really beautiful so I can't wait to keep using it even more I will say that I feel like the packaging for this collection is not indicative of like the actual products like the packaging on the outside is really fun and glittery and bright and then you open it up and it's like a very light matte blush I would expect something a little bit darker a little bit glittery I don't know I just feel like the packaging is different than like the actual product and then same with the palette, like you open it up and honestly, like when you look at the shadows, they're gorgeous. They're extremely beautiful. But if you like cover up this shade right here, it's a pretty like light, cool toned palette. Don't let the packaging fool you if you are not into like glittery pink packaging, like look at the actual products first. So I don't know, I'm personally looking forward to using them. I think this palette is a fun option that I will get a lot of use out of. And then I guess I never got my birthday gift. My birthday was on May 5th, which was a while ago, but they gave me the option 
to grab this when I was placing my order. So I did get my little Sephora Beauty Insider gift this year. So this comes with a couple of products. So you get these little samples. They're Agave Lip Balm and they're Agave Sugar lip scrub. I have tried the lip balm, but I haven't tried the sugar scrub, so I will give that a shot. And then you get two different lip products. The first one is their Amuse Bouche lipstick in the shade Chai. This is one of my favorite lipstick formulas of all time. I feel like if I was going to treat myself to a high-end lipstick formula, this is the one that I would choose, just because it's so richly pigmented and smooth and creamy, and they stay in place fairly well throughout the day without feeling uncomfortable on the lips. And then they also included their Matte Cream Lip Crayon in the shade Glacé. These colors are actually very similar. Chai is a little bit darker, but I'm looking forward to using them. And I don't know, I just like mini lip products because lip products are another one of those categories that I just never finish up. So that is everything that I picked up from Sephora. Like I said, it was a little bit of a smaller haul, but I still wanted to show you guys what I decided to grab. Make sure to subscribe or come back because I will film a Sephora haul update in a couple of weeks and let you know which products products worked, which ones didn't. I will also include the products that I picked up during my recent Ulta haul, so it will be a little bit of a longer video with more reviews, so make sure to stay tuned for that, but I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow with a new video. Bye!